our theme for today is moving forward in the power of God's faithfulness. Moving forward, that suggests something to us. If we have a goal and if we have a direction that we should be moving in, we thank God that the same God that got us here will take us to where he wants us to go. So this time we're going to call up Brother Terry from the band and on behalf of Minister Willie, who sends his love to you. He could not make it today. He had a previous engagement that he could not cancel. But he says for me, especially to let you know how much he loves you guys and how much he appreciates all of the appreciation and, and things, the kind of words that you say to him over the years. I remember when he was about this high, <laughs> playing in the opening when I was in the alley, in the back alley. And he's been faithful. And God has blessed him. And we thank God for you today, Brother Ted, for standing there for him. Let's give Ted a hand. And we can ask Brother Terry to come at this time, and he's going to share some words on behalf of the band to us. Just that in Minister Willie's absence, he's asked me to come to say a few words and uh, just want to say that uh, on behalf of Lexus Connection, we just appreciate you all. And I mean, to get to 41 years for a church to be together, that is a milestone most definitely because especially through the pandemic, a lot of things and people just stopped coming and really stopped believing in God and a lot of other things. So I just want to say in Minister Willie's behalf that we appreciate you all allowing us to minister through you all through our music and uh, Pastor most definitely for just staying faithful to the word and just doing what you do. It's, it's because of you that this is still standing most definitely because we appreciate you and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Praise God. Moving forward, we, we have a few people that are going to come up and share um, their thoughts and the part of their lives with us. And first, we're going to call uh, Deacon Adam McCain, <laughs> brother that's been here at this church for a long time, over four decades. And, and in spite of that hard look he gives you sometimes, the man have a heart of gold. And he always extends his hand of compassion. He doesn't want the notoriety and all of that, but he is a true man of God. Why don't you greet him as he comes down and Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Woo! Oh, have mercy. <laughs> you know, God is awesome. I done went over everything, thought of everything. In the bottom line, I should have stopped saying, first of all, Lord, show me what to talk about. I say, God is awesome, say we moving forward. But God is always faithful. And then I found out about Galatians in five, in the fruit of the spirit. And the first word that I put out, not only love, but I pull faith out. Then you got to have faith to get the faith, and then you become faithfulness by what? Moving. That means you got can't stand still. You got to keep going forward. And starting with OCC many, many years ago, I learned I had to see what I need to see until I made my mind up that I was going to serve the Lord. I watched Pastor Betty from before she became a pastor, and I seen her went from glory to glory. And guess what? And she's still being faithful in what God had called her to do. So, myself, I can only speak for me, not for you guys, to support her and pray for her and push her as far God allow her to go. And God, she, what she do, she do it to the glory of God. She had never once, since I've been knowing her that kind of long time ago, shown us and nothing concerning to the word of God. She's 
show love and she do what God say because she's faithful and faithfulness and what that she do. I know a lot of people are called, some are chosen. But thank God for her and continue to encourage her to go forth, not only in power and in demonstration, that she gonna do what God has for her, no one can stop her from getting it. Say, if God be for you, it don't make no difference who against you. You're going to be a successful according to what the scripture has said. And that we continue to make up our mind, pull off the old man, which is first of all is the biggest problem of all anyway. Amen. And the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in his son Jesus. So, that we all may have the mind of Christ. And I thank the Lord, say, he said, with temptation, through that temptation, he will make a way for you to escape. Because he already know what we stand in the need of before he asks. But being as a father, he wants you to ask. My thing is, you have not because you ask. Something we lust after. But something you wish that you got that you wouldn't have. That you got. I mean, the word stands by itself, but we have to line up with the word. People find the Bible to say what they want to say, but the only thing about it, they don't want to live it. Because the truth will make you free only if you allow it. Pastor Betty do her job. She teach the word. But one thing she's not going to try to make you live the word. That's up to you with a well made up mind. That in, you know, that we have a pastor that knows how to lead us. Because see, if Dr. Betty might not have been the pastor one of us, we might have, if you didn't do the word of God, you know what we do? We lock you in a room with Deacon McCain. <laughs> we see which one come out right. But thank God we have a pastor that has, has God's purpose and his will in mind. So we just thank God. Thank you, old brother. That's the way he is all the time, right there. Just the way you saw him. And you can see and hear the wisdom in his voice. And we thank God for sending you to our scriptures. And I thank you for being here when I got here, brother. I appreciate you. Amen. We're going to call up now at this time Sister Vanessa McCullum. She was actually one of the first teenagers here at Outreach Christian Center. And God knows she still looks like a teenager. <laughs> so we're going to bring her all right now. Why don't you greet her in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sister Vanessa. church and um, she put me and my brothers in the car with her and we drove up and down Marlboro Pike looking for a church. <laughs> um, eventually we did find out that it wasn't a church building we were looking for but um, that it was off in a little um, shopping center area. Shortly after that the church moved to uh, Suitland Road and um, I was kind of voluntold that I was a member of the church. <laughs> um, one day, Pastor Sweeney told my mom and her kids to stand up, and we did, and he said, um, they joined the church. And I was like, oh, I did? Okay, yes, I did. Um, I also, I think in the church, I can uniquely say that I'm the only one that Pastor Sweeney prayed at my graduation. Um, we needed a pastor to pray, and um, the friend of mine who was planning the graduation didn't know anybody. So I was like, well, I, I have a pastor. Um, and he agreed, and then he spoke um, at the now non-existent um, Capitol Center at my high school graduation. Um, back, back. In those times, I don't know if I really fully 
appreciated um, all the messages, all the time that we were spending at church because I felt like, probably like most kids, like church is long. Um, and back then, church was really a good three hours, <laughs> not even including Sunday school. Um, so on the rare occasions that Elder Brown would be teaching, my brothers and I would be really excited because we, he only taught like 10 or 15. <laughs> um, so we were like, yes, we're going to get up <laughs> today. Um, but over all the years, I can say that I have learned a lot. There's been a lot of experiences, a lot of lessons that I learned um, coming from the pulpit and just you know, interacting with people as you walk in the hallway and, you know, you just, a lot of people became extended family members, lifelong friends, um, and I really, at this point, really appreciate that in my life. Um, as far as Dr. Betty, one of the most important life lessons I've learned from her. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Oh. It's all right. Hey, you hey, you it's to worship God. Yeah. No matter what is going on in your life. Um, that uh, is, she demonstrated that through her life and what she taught us across the pulpit. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah Sister Vanessa. I, I felt the same way when, when Minister Stitt brought me down in the back of that alley. See, I used to sell drugs, and I thought Minister Stitt had sold me out. <laughs> I thought, because there were some people that were looking for me because I owed him some money. I said, he didn't sold me out. <laughs> Took me in the back of this alley. They're going to they gonna, they gonna kill me. <laughs> and I did die. Okay. Yeah. 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 There was a death and a burial and a resurrection of my heart and my soul. And we'll back out where miracles did happen. We're going to call up at this time a young lady. Um, you often see her working, you know, if you see a movie or, or a TV show afterwards, you see the credits. And they have the stars of the show and then they have all of these other people that do stuff. 
and you never see them, never know who they really are, but they're so important to what goes on. Yeah. She's a lady, she might be doing anything from drawing to, to calligraphy to, to, to paint faces on children, and she does all of this with a cheerful heart. Yeah. And not only that, somehow she found time a week ago last Friday to receive a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree at Boone State University. Thank God for this ministry, you know, that has, you know, taught me so much. Um, I've been here for 29 years, and um, I came when I was on Super Road, and um, you really taught like a, a really scared, alone, you know, confused girl that just kept, you know, looking for love and, and all the wrong people, looking for love and drugs and looking for for love and alcohol in the bottom of a bottle. And you took that girl and you made her strong mm -hmm. right now. Amen. And I just thank God for Amen. the ministry. It's done so much for my life. Amen. And um, I did not want to talk today because I don't like to talk in front of people. But when someone said, you know, you want to share what God's done for you, I couldn't just sit still. And that's something else that the ministry has taught me to come out of my comfort zone, you know, and do something and let, you know, God be glorified, you know, by whatever I can say or share, um, you know. I just, again, I just thank God for this ministry, and um, that's all I got. <laughs> church that there's still people out there like me and Sister Rhonda that need help that don't know where to go or how to get there. They, they don't know what to do about life because life is hard right now. There's nowhere to run to find peace. You can't send your kids to school without being fearful. You can't move to the suburbs and think you'll be safe. You may not know it or not, but that's the love of God just letting us know how much we need Him. Yes. So we thank God. I thank God for the Church of Jesus Christ, but I especially thank God for Outreach Christian Center because that's where He chose to take me. Turn my life around. Yeah. 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 People don't stay with a place for 20 and 30 and 40 years if they're not receiving anything. Yeah. So we thank God. As we move on now, we got a, another 40 year member. Uh, this is my buddy. Yeah. He's my go to guy. Yeah, everybody needs a go to guy. I go to him because I know he's going to tell me the truth. And I respect what he says and what he does and how he's lived his life. And I always tell him this. I just thank him and his, his wife for being a shining example of a mom and dad and how they raised their kids in the midst of this ministry. And not to exalt them above measure, but just to say, well done, brother. Well done. I wish that I had been the man for my kids that he'd been with his. But thank God that Jesus Christ gives me the opportunity to get it right. Yeah. Time has no measure with him. Glory to God. So we're going to call it this time. My friend, Elder, Elder Brown, come on up here, brother. God bless you. Glory to God. It's God has been in me here. And, uh, I thank God for this ministry. Uh, 
came here. I think I was directed by God to come here in 1982. We visited in 1982 and became full members, I believe, in 1983. And uh, God, God's done a work in all of us. One thing I learned, one of the main things I learned in this ministry, never quit. <laughs> No matter what's going on in your life, no matter whatever challenges show up in your life, God is with you. Never quit. Amen. And uh, I thank God, Dr. Betty, for showing how you love the people. I remember in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, and uh, you waited to hear from God what to do. The church was closed for a couple uh, months. But you waited to hear from God. You showed the love for people and their protection and their safety. And I saw that. And I, I see it as a, a leader. As a leader, you have to love the people. Because sometimes they bite you. <laughs> sometimes they talk about you. But your love, the love of God, you keep going. You keep loving the people. You keep loving them to help. You keep loving them to give them the truth. Amen. And I wanted to share this one, one thing that I wrote down here from April 7th, 2019. I think it was five months before Pastor Paz. He said, do not miss the divine mission of OCC. Do not miss the divine mission of OCC. And the mission is to win souls. Amen. The mission is, the mission is to disciple people. The mission is to make an impact in this community. The mission is to let our light shine. No matter what's going on, we see darkness everywhere. But let us our light shine. And so that speaks to every one of us. Everyone that God has sent here that's born again as a member here has a gift. If we're going to complete the mission, everybody's going to have to use their gift. When Jesus fed the 5,000 and more, he had two loaves of bread, I mean two fish and five loaves of bread. And he offered unto God and he blessed it and multiplied it. The same way as you offer your gift unto God. He will multiply it and bless many people without us even knowing it. So, if you don't know what to do, join a prayer group. I think we have a prayer group Saturday mornings, Monday nights, I think even in the noon time. How many know that every one of us need prayer? Every one of us. Join one of the prayer groups. I know the tape ministry, there's only two people working there now. They need help. There's many groups and ideas that you can contribute. There's no time for holding back. Jesus is coming to get his church, to get his faithful church, the ones that keep on pressing and loving God, to keep loving God in spite of everything, to keep loving God. Offer yourself unto God as an offering unto God. And your gift and your heart and God will multiply it. Praise God. Praise God Almighty. You know, we talk about this God. There may be somebody in our midst that doesn't know who this God is. This is the heartbeat of the church. God gave us a great commission to live a life and present a gospel to the world that people may know that there is a savior available. How many people are glad to be saved? Amen. Praise God You know, I'll be real brief, but there's so many questions. Sometimes people think that Christians are rude because we say that Jesus Christ is the only way. Well, we didn't make that up. Our Savior said that. 
In the book of John, the 14th chapter, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I'm the light. Listen, listen. No man can come to the Father except by me. That's what he said. So when I tell you this, I'm not giving you my words. I'm giving you the words of my Savior and the only Savior. There's only one name by which men can be saved. What is that name? Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. So why do I need to be saved? What, what, what is this whole salvation thing about? God is a holy and a perfect God and he made us to be holy and perfect people. But when given an opportunity and a choice, we chose to disobey God and we brought sin into this world and God cannot stand in the presence of sin or turn it around. Sin can't stand in the presence of God. But why doesn't God get rid of all of this sin and evil in the world? Because he would have to kill every one of us. We have no hope. When God says you have no hope, there is no hope. There's not a hope in the underneath of a piece of lint in another galaxy light, light years away. God has searched everything and says there's no hope but God who was rich in mercy sent his only begotten son that when Jesus came to earth and lived that life after 42 generations and he went to that cross and he took that beating that night that he was not even recognizable as a human being and they drove stakes in his arms and his legs and he uttered not a mumbling word and he dropped the blood that came down that would be the blood that would cleanse the sins of the world. You know why he did that? He did that for you. He did that for me. Well, how do I get saved? The Holy Spirit will convict you that you are a sinner, that you've lied, that you, you, you've cheated, you've done all manner of things. There's nothing that you can do that God won't forgive you. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on that cross for you, that he paid the price that you could never pay, that his ransom of his blood and his life was sufficient to God. And you say, I believe in Jesus Christ. He will save your soul instantly. Instantly. So if there's someone here today, listen, if you have any doubt in your mind that you're saved or not, I would not question coming up right now to this front of this altar and saying, I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're just going to make this invitation. It's not my job to convince you. It's not my job to make you. It's my job to give you the invitation to come into the family of God. Nobody here is guaranteed to even walk out of this building today. But you would have the greatest regret if you leave here today and neglect this invitation and you're not saved. So if there's someone here, I need everybody praying. If there's someone here right now in the name of Jesus, then you are not assured that if you died right now that you would go to heaven. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then what a great thing if everybody here is saved or everybody here is assured that they're ready to face God and meet him and see him eye to eye. Let's give God a hand clap. Thank God, thank God. At this time, uh, I'm just going to just shortly just extend my gratitude to my church family, to my pastor. 41 years, Dr. Betty, it's quite, quite a feat to continue to do the same thing, to be constant, to be faithful. So much happens uh, by watching the pastor's lives that they have family and they have a life too outside of this church. You know what? We never expect them to neglect anything else but always be here for the church. And I don't know how you get it done sometimes, but you get it done. And you always do it with a smile on your face. You never push the concerns of your life over on us. And I'm going to tell you, the only way somebody can do that is they have to walk in the fullness of God. Amen. God knows I get overwhelmed with my own life sometimes. But you can't say, you know what, today I don't feel like. You can't say today I, I don't think that I should. You have to do what God has called you to do because anything that God has called you to do, he empowers you.
to be able to do it. So thank you for 41 faithful years, Dr. Benny. And at this time, I would like for you guys to stand and I would like to ask Dr. Benny to come on stage. We have a short presentation to give to her and give her a hand clap as she comes. Now, if y'all look at my pastor, and if you say to yourselves that the things of the past, I think the Bible says that if the, if the and I check this out, if the king is angry, all his men are bitter. So that means that whatever the pastors or the leaders do will rub off on us. Boy, if we, if, if I could just stay as good looking as I am for as long as I can. <laughs> we have a beautiful, both in spirit and in appearance, you are one of the most loveliest women I've ever known in my life. I love your heart. I thank God that you prayed for me. I'll never forget the words when my son got locked up. You told me, you said, before he got locked up, you looked at me and you said, you said, Brother Thompson, don't worry. He's going to be all right. He went from not being all right to being worse. He's been locked up for 28 years. He converted to Islam. And we prayed. One day he said, I'm coming home, Dad. Uh, Jesus. I know it's true in his heart. He reversed and told his people that he wasn't going to be a Muslim anymore. They tried to kill him. He didn't even try to retaliate. He's now at the brink of coming home. Yeah. Yeah. And I thank God that we have a place that in my time of need that you guys encourage me. But I know one thing, we can sing a song. My pastor prayed for me. You had me on your mind. You took the time out of your day, out of all of these people, you took the time and prayed for me. And I am grateful for that. We can never repay you monetarily or if anything. There's not a card written that could express what we feel for you. But on behalf of the Church of Outreach Christian Center, in Jesus' name, we present this to you, Dr. Betty Sweeney, in the name, reader, in the name of Jesus, will you give my pastor, your pastor, God, you know what you deserve. God, that ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. You ain't good to us. You ain't good for us. That ain't good enough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you so much. Because I remember each one when they came to the church. Condition it was in. But God. But God. Who was rich in mercy. He taught them through the vessel that he chose to use. And again, you know, I am so grateful to have such people surrounding me like you. Woo! You know, if it had not been for the mercy and grace of God, sending you to Outreach Christian Center, where would we be today? I love each one of you. You know, I miss teaching. I, I really miss teaching, so I really miss that. I will be teaching next Sunday. Praise God. My praise and worship. I'd rather praise and worship and worship God more than I want to live. Because praise and worship is what I do. It's what I love to worship God. There's nothing like worshiping
worship him. He deserved the praise. He deserved the honor. All our praise. Thank you for, you know, thanking God for what he's done through me. But sisters and brothers, it's God. It is God that deserves all the praise and all the worship and all the honor goes to him. So, you know, I, I always say, when I start talking about God, you will have to really take this microphone from me. Because there's, you, there's no end in your shaka. There's no end in to talking about God. You cannot put a time on talking about God. You just have to stop. Oh, Jesus. 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 Jesus